This segment is sponsored by VCU Health. The doctor is in and you have questions. Pregnancy loss, though it's hard to consider, is actually more common than many people realize. As many as one in five women suffer pregnancy loss by the age of 35. Dr. Francis Casey, OBGYN and Director of Family Planning Services with VCU Health joins us to share helpful insight and suggestions for how couples can cope with the tragic loss of a pregnancy and plan for future pregnancies. Doctor, it's wonderful to see you. Nice to see you as well. Thank you for having me. Our pleasure. This is such an important conversation and as we said, not one that people tend to have very often. When is pregnancy loss most common? Yes, it's important that people realize that this isn't discussed often enough. It is quite common and all of us should work towards destigmatizing how people feel about pregnancy loss. It is most common in the first trimester and unfortunately also more common in women of color. It's important to remember that pregnancy loss, even though most common in the first trimester, can occur throughout the entire pregnancy and honestly can be devastating no matter when it occurs. When you experience pregnancy loss, uh, it's important to remember that it, it's, it's not something that you blame yourself. Are there causes to pregnancy loss? That's exactly right. It's so imperative that providers and support uh, personnel always remind the patient and their family that there's nothing, typically nothing that a person could have done to control any element related to pregnancy loss. Sometimes there can be medical conditions involved and it's important to identify those um, and help improve health conditions when we can. But most often pregnancy loss has resulted from some kind of genetic abnormality or something genetically related that is typically beyond anyone's control. I would imagine insights come out of that provider-patient relationship as this loss is experienced to determine some of those things that may have occurred. What else can providers do to support their patients after they may have experienced a loss? Yes, I think uh, just being there for them as much as they possibly can and understanding that the response that someone has can be highly varied um, towards a pregnancy loss and helping gather support personnel. Someone uh, may need ancillary service support or close follow-up related to depression or anxiety they may feel um, after a pregnancy loss. And again, because this conversation is not typically had very regularly or often after this happens, this information may be new. You may not know to consider pursuing more from your provider or being able to find those, uh, those elements. Some may not see an OBGYN until they're actually pregnant. Should couples consider having a conversation preconception? That's a very important uh, thing to consider. Oftentimes there are certain health or medical conditions or even medications someone may be on. And so seeing a provider early and even prior to pregnancy or in anticipation of pregnancy can help to modify some of those. Yes, thank you for uh, bringing that up. And I just want to reiterate that it really is your provider's responsibility and uh, you know they owe it to you to be supportive and to provide you with links to both community resources and any ancillary support services you may need. There are also loss support groups as well that can be quite helpful. Knowing that there are resources and knowing that you should be able to expect that from a provider is key. Thank you so much, Dr. Casey, for making time to talk with us. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely, we'll share a little bit. For more information, you can visit vcumom.com or call the team at 804-828-4409. And stay with us, Virginia This Morning returns in just a few minutes.